Hey everybody, so today I want to talk about my outdoor setup and how I transitioned from indoor to outdoor these last few weeks. So uh, let's get started with my bow and we'll work from there. Okay, so the bow I'm shooting is the Prevail 37. It's 37 inches axle axle and it's got, this one has the SVX cam on there. I've been shooting that cam for a little while now so um, I haven't changed it because it hasn't done me wrong yet. So um, I'm really liking the color, especially this year. I did a purple bow for the first time. I actually had a Hyper Edge, uh, I think last year, two years ago. And uh, I think, you know, I didn't want to change from the spiral cam or, you know, the SVX style cam uh, to a softer cam. So I got rid of that bow. So I did another purple again. Um, it's actually my girlfriend's favorite color, so that's why I uh, represent the purple. But, um, so what I do when I first start with my bow, I like to make my own strings. So I made some black strings um, with BCY 452X, and I use the Halo 14 serving, and, and actually I use Power Grip 14 serving for the center serving. And uh, the loop material is the thinner loop material, I believe it's the 23. I'd have to double check that, but so before I really set the bow up to shoot, you know, I made my strings, got that all good. Um, but then when I took down my indoor bow, took it apart, I put some measurements down. So like, for example, I mean, I got what my axle axle actually was, you know, the brace height, um, poundage, holding weight, draw length. Um, and then obviously my string, I keep the same, uh, but I wrote that down also. So one thing I had to do for this rest is I put a screw up here, if you can see it, put it right here, and I actually ran my cord through here still, wrapped it around, and what this allows it not to do is drop too far down. With this rest, it doesn't have you know, a stopping point on the bottom end, so it can literally it can start from here and go to here. So, you know, complete 180 degrees, it can move. And the problem with that is it, my riser's in the way. And I've actually had a few blades um, bend because I, you know, had it too close and didn't, it wasn't stopping. It would go past and hit, you know, the riser and it kept hitting and hitting and hitting. And, you know, I shoot all day, every day, pretty much. So it bent my blade after a while. But yeah, overall, I like the rest. You know, I can shoot good with it, I can shoot bad with it, so it's not the equipment, it's usually me, so I, uh, I got rid of that contact, and I liked it for indoor, so I kept it for outdoor, and we'll see how she goes for outdoor. So let's now talk about my sight. The sight I'm using is the Carbon Achieve, six inch carbon rod, and obviously I got it in the gold, and the purple and gold seem seeming to rub off on me pretty well, but, you know, this sight is real nice. It's real precise. So right here, I love this part. You can actually lock the elevation so it doesn't move and it keeps it nice and tight so there's no movement in the head. Um, it's got micro clicks left and right. It's got micro clicks up and down. It has been really reliable for me. I have sh shot this um, since it came out, I believe. So literally, before that, I shot the other um, AX3000. I love that. Um, and it's always been good for me, you know. It's been durable, which is a big thing. You know, going to Redding, California for that shoot, it is dusty or muddy if it rains, you know. It's, you know, you never know. And your, my, last year, my boat was covered in dust. It was, it was crazy how much dust I accumulated over the time there. And everything still worked fine, so, you know, you can clean it out when you get home, obviously, but while you're there, sometimes on the course, if it get gum, if it gets gummed up, you know, you're you're not, it's not going to go well for you. So this hasn't gummed up yet, knock on wood. So uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But I love it. So the next part of my sight 
is the scope. I use a shrewd uh, mini mag. And I have, you know, a front shade on there. That is detachable. I got the rear shade, which is connected to my lens. But the mini mag, it's a 29 millimeter housing. It's machined aluminum, very durable. I've been shooting these for, oh man, for a long time now. And uh, they have the essential out, but I just seem to always like the mini mag. I, you know, I have a few of them, they work. There's no one really need to change it. So, uh, but I don't do any pin. A lot of guys like to put pins, a pin in there, but I've always shot a dot in my lens and I don't know, I'm used to it. But what I actually did this year, or actually last year, Feather Vision came out with a etch dot on the lens and uh, with a fiber through it. So I like that idea because for the field, um, you got a black target, you know, you're aiming at or a white target with a black dot, you know, so the black dot can get faded out in whatever target you're shooting. And the uh, green allows you to know, okay, it's right there the whole time. So um, I do like that. I actually, this is the Feather Vision Verde Plus and I have, or it's a six power. I've always shot six power for probably three or four years now. So not always, but for the past so many years and uh, seems to be working. I use it for indoor and outdoor. I don't change it. It's literally what I shot for all indoor season and that's what I'm gonna shoot for outdoor season. So, and this is actually detachable from my site, which is real nice. So when I store it to go places, it's literally a uh, twist of the knob and it's tight, it's there and it's easy. It's got, and that piece actually has my second and third axis and uh, which is real nice. And you can always swap those out. So if I want to try a bigger housing or a, a housing with a pin in it or whatever, I can literally just do this, pop her off, put the new one on, and I'm ready to go. about are my stabilizers so I'm shooting the shrewd onyx stabilizer this is a 14 inch sidebar and I shoot a 30 inch front bar and I've tried different ones different lengths um, but I always seem to go back to the 30 and 14 and I actually have changed up my weight ratio um, quite a bit actually uh, before so like this is 23 ounces on the back with eight and one third on the front. And during the indoor season, I actually had only 19 on the back, I believe. I think it was 19, but on the front, I had 11. So it's a little bit different. I got definitely more weight on the back, a little less weight on the front, and it seems to be aiming pretty darn good, you know? Okay. so. Let's talk about, I think the final piece, one of the final pieces, but my arrows. So I'm using, if it focuses, the X10 Pro Tour by Easton. I've used these for the past five years, I, I think. Um, and I, you know, I messed with like, this is a 380, I've messed with a 340. I shot that last year outdoors, shot good. Um, I shot 380 the year before that. It also shot good. And I'm messing with, you know, different point weight too. What I'm trying, I was using 120 grains up front for the last five days. And I just made these up yesterday. And these are 140. So I tested it out through paper and it didn't change my tear, you know, and maybe 
very, very little, but not much at all. And uh, so I'm gonna try them at 50 meters because I think with more front weight, it's gonna help cut through the wind a little bit. So we'll see if that theory is, is true or not. Um, but yeah, so I got the, this is the tungsten point, 140 in this one, 120 in my other six. And I have the AAE Max in white with the uh, large groove G knock. I think this is the final piece now. And uh, it's about my releases. And here, hold on one second. Let me grab one more. So indoor season, I was shooting the Halo by Scott. And you know, I like it, it works good. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is it's not micro adjust for the moon. So it's a little bit of a pain to move it a little bit at a time. Um, I got it, you know, I got it good, but just took a little bit more time than it could have if it was not, or if it was micro. So going to the Arizona Cup and shooting FIDA now, I uh, was worried a little bit about the wind and if I need to get the shot off quick. So I switched actually to the True Ball Fulcrum for the hinge. Reason I'm switching to True Ball is because this release is the same as this release, but this is a button. So this is the Abyss Flex, and it's a nice button. But what's cool about these releases is the point of contact on the loop are the exact same. So this, you know, should hit the same spot no matter what release I use. And I really like that because I love shooting a hinge, um, but for the windy situations, the button I can take out, you know, manipulate if I have to, or use it in back tension the same way, but go quicker. I, uh, I feel a little bit better using it for those windy situations. Because when you gotta get the arrows off, you gotta get them off. And I think ripping this off or manipulating this, for me at least, you know, I miss more than if I manipulate a button. So, you know, I switched to this, honestly, one of, that's one of the biggest reason. Um, but since I've started using it, it, it is very comfortable. It's a little thicker than, definitely thicker than this one, if you look at those. But, you know, it's built tough. True Ball has been around a long time and they've built quality stuff, which is good. Um, just like my site, quality. And I, I'm all about quality. I think that's all of my uh, indoor, or indoor, outdoor setup. So, if you guys have any questions, you know, hit me up on the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. You know, hit a like for me too. Makes me feel good inside. So, uh, and share this if you, if you will. Um, hopefully we're doing more of these in the future. Definitely in my travels this year, going to a whole bunch of different places for the USAT tournaments. So uh, I'm excited. So thank you very much.